Dragon Ball Sparking Zero story mode is utterly disappointing in many, many ways, but it's one saving grace is the What If Sagas. There's some cool stuff in there, and today we're going to be ranking all 13 What If Sagas in Sparking Zero from worst to best. First, quick disclaimer, I'm only ranking the actual arcs and sagas that lead to Sparking episodes, not the little things like What If Mecha Frieza beat Trunks and then Goku on his way back to Earth. Things like that are technically What If, but they're not full-on arcs, they're really just a fight or two, so I'm not going to be including those. There are 13 total What If arcs or sagas. And let's just jump right into it. Number 13, we've got Jiren's What If, called True Strength. So to get this What If, you have to choose to stay back and watch the fight instead of getting involved and stopping Kale's Rampage. And the reason this is bottom of the list is because honestly it leads to almost the exact same arc of fights and many of the exact same cutscenes and dialogue as his normal story. So it almost seems a little bit pointless. I know there's not much you can do with Jiren, so I'm not going to rag on it much. But it is largely the same. You get to fight Master Roshi, whoop de doo that's an extra little fight. But the fact that Jiren is also my least favorite character out of all of the playable story modes doesn't really help his case. It does lead to a cool little sparking episode at the end though where Jiren wins the tournament and his heart has been changed and he decides to wish everybody back to life. And it's all sunshines and rainbows and it's all nice, but you don't even actually technically need to do the what if to get that sparking episode. You can get it by following his main storyline and just doing one different thing in his final fight with Goku. But yeah, in my opinion, because it's so similar to his normal storyline, Jiren's what if has to be bottom of the rankings for me. Now, not far behind in number 12, Goku Black's what if, called Proof of Justice. Honestly, this is pretty interchangeable with Jiren's. It's just that I like Goku Black more. I like playing as him more, so it was more fun gameplay wise for me. And at least there's a lot of different dialogue here as opposed to Jiren's, which is a lot of the same dialogue. Here you do get different lines here and there as opposed to his main storyline. And the only difference is, what can you really do with a Goku Black what if? The only what if you can do is what if he actually wins and kills Goku, Vegeta, and Trunks and gets his zero mortal plan realized. And so there aren't really any different fights. You just fight Goku, Vegeta, and Trunks the whole time, which is to be expected. And there are a number of different ways you can win. You can win fused, you can win unfused, but it all really leads to the same ending. And so, yeah, there's not much to this what if. It's exactly what you expect it to be. And it's pretty interchangeable with Jiren's to be bottom of the list. Number 11 is one of Goku's what ifs called the changing future. In this what if, you've got to help Piccolo against Cell instead of waiting for him to be defeated first. And then you've got to defeat Cell and then take on the androids and you basically pacify them after you fight them as Goku. It's honestly a nice little what if. There's not much to it though. You get to fight Android 16 as Goku, which is a cool little what if that we've all kind of wondered what would happen if 16 actually decided to fight Goku or got his chance to fight Goku. And I like how when you finally beat all the androids, Android 16, 17, and 18 all kind of buddy up and squat up and live happily ever after or whatever they do. So I kind of like that ending. But it is pretty short and not that dramatic, so I have to put it kind of lower on the list. Number 10 is one of Trunks' what ifs, called A Shining Hope. In this what if, you actually get to trap Samasu with the evil containment wave and defeat Goku Black with Vegeta. So what is this arc really? It's just the way the original story should have ended, which is why it's number 10, it's not bottom of the list. Because again, there's not much difference in the writing here from the original storyline, other than they fixed the ending, and because of that, I gotta bump it up a little bit. Number 9 is one of Vegeta's what ifs called a number 1 spot. In this what if, you've gotta resist Bobbity's mind control, which leads to a cool little sparking episode where you get to see Vegeta's pride and his willpower on display as he fights off Bobbity. And once you do, you fight Deborah and beat his ass, then kill Bobbity. And then you actually get to fight Goku in the World Tournament in a little exhibition match. But you're both in base form because there's, you know, spectators around. You don't want to kill everybody. And you get to beat Goku, which is a, it's a nice little fight here, I'll admit. I like this kind of scenario they got going on. And this is the first what if where they actually have to do a little bit of writing. Aside from the Goku one with the androids, I guess. And they have to create a fully kind of original dialogue. And I'm a little sad that Goku stays dead here, and he basically says, All right, see you guys never, whenever you die. But as a Vegeta fan, it's nice to see Goku admitting that Vegeta is a better fighter than him. Number 8, we've got Piccolo's What If called A Mentor's Guidance. Now this What If technically starts in the Frieza fight. You can see that this has absolutely nothing to do with the What If later. But in the actual storyline arc, you'll see that A Mentor's Guidance is also the title of the What If where Piccolo defeats Frieza and faces him in his final form, then escapes Namek with Gohan, whilst Goku kills Frieza anyway, so it's really the same ending, but I don't know, I just wanted to mention that little 
weird tidbit because this has absolutely nothing to do with the actual what if which starts when you decide to step in to help goku against android 19 instead of staying back and watching and because you step in goku's heart virus doesn't progress as quickly and so piccolo has to step in to take over gohan's training in the arc because goku's too sick to help him out there's minor changes here like piccolo fights android 18 instead of android 17 on the island and then obviously the big change is piccolo helping gohan train in the hyperbolic time chamber which ends up leading to Piccolo stepping up to fight against Cell, which made me laugh. But it's a nice change, which leads to Cell kind of kicking Piccolo's ass, as you would expect. Which enrages Gohan and causes him to go Super Saiyan 2. And there's a little section here in the Hyperwalk Time Chamber where you can choose to train Gohan's mind or train his body. And if you train his mind, instead of being a bratty little punk against Cell in Super Saiyan 2 and trying to make him suffer, Gohan will actually give him a chance to surrender and control his emotions. Which ultimately doesn't amount to mean anything because Cell ends up blowing himself up and Goku teleports him away anyways and he dies. And then Cell returns once again like it usually happens. And the reason this is lower on the list is because you get a Kamehameha clash between Gohan and Cell like the original. But it's just far less cool without Goku there. Or you could have had Piccolo help him out. Maybe like a student teacher Masenko or something like that. Because here all Piccolo does is shoot a little blast at Cell from behind. Allowing Gohan to kill him. Which is far less compelling to me. But still, we get this nice final line from Piccolo to end the arc. Wow. You grew up fast, kid. At number 7, we have Frieza's What If called Frieza Force Joins the Fray. Oh, there's so much potential here. So in this What If, you gotta defeat Goku and Vegeta as Golden Frieza when you return to Earth. And then Beerus stops Frieza from destroying Goku and Vegeta and Earth, because I guess he likes the food or whatever, in return for allowing him to do whatever he wants in the future and use the Dragon Balls to revive the Frieza Force. So cool, great setup right there. We've got a great story waiting for us, right? Wrong. When Beerus invites Frieza to join the Tournament of Power, you get to choose some companions. I was like, oh my god, you get to choose King Cold, you get to choose Cooler, you get to choose the Ginyu Force, Zarbon, and Dodoria. You got four different what ifs in one, but it was severely underwhelming. I was very disappointed after how hyped I was for it. If you choose Cooler or King Cold, you only really get like a line or two out of them. And you get like one fight each from them. It's really not too much. And you just win the tournament of power. You don't get to fight Jiren or Topo or Goku or Vegeta. You just fight one, what was it? Caulifla, I believe it was in one case. Kale, maybe Kaba. And then it just ends with a JPEG and a narration that I have to read over myself. Pretty disappointing. Zarbon and Dodoria is largely the same. And then when it gets to the Ginyu Force, you don't even get to play as any of the Ginyu Force members in the tournament of power. What is that about? I'll admit I like the line where Ginyu kind of compliments Rebrian and the Pride Troopers on their poses. I like that. But why would you even have that option if you can't let me play as at least Captain Ginyu or something? So yeah, Frieza's What If might have been number one if they executed it better, but it was just far too short-lived and cut down, and it could have been fleshed out a lot more. So for that reason, it's number seven. Number six is another of Trunks' What Ifs called Inherited Pride. In this What If you decide to stay in the past instead of returning to your own future timeline, and train with Gohan, with Vegeta, and then you eventually end up reaching the Tournament of Power. I like this what if you get to see Trunks hold Bulla. It's really cute. And in this specific what if you've got to choose to go along with Vegeta in the Tournament of Power instead of staying behind with Gohan. And you get to fight Kaba, Kale, Khalifa, and then Topo in the end. There's a cool sparking episode in the end where you get to fight Topo with your father and defeat him and knock him out of bounds. But again, I feel like they could have done a little bit more there. And then after he's knocked out, you just end up winning. And you get a few JPEGs where they tell you you've won the Tournament of Power. And you and Vegeta wish for every universe to be brought back. So I would have liked to see a little bit more bonding with Vegeta and Trunks here than we actually ended up getting. Number 5 is another of Goku's What Ifs called Side by Side. In this What If, you've got to decline Piccolo's help against Raditz and head off to face him with Krillin and Master Roshi. But then Piccolo ends up coming and finishing him with a special beam cannon anyways. I did really like how Master Roshi actually did something here though. That was cool. In this one, as you would expect, because Goku stays alive, he does not go to train with King Kai here. And he's there to confront the Saiyans with his comrades, the Z Fighters all together. I thought it was really dope to see them all kind of ganged up together. And they managed to beat Nappa, and then they gang up on Vegeta. I wasn't a big fan of how Piccolo used his special beam cannon on both Goku and Vegeta. But then Vegeta slipped away, and Goku took the full brunt of the attack. I didn't really like that part. But then Goku somehow, with a huge hole in his body, manages to get up and beat Vegeta anyways. I don't know how that happened. But okay, that's fine. And then the ending of this arc is similar to the actual main storyline where Vegeta crawls away, Krillin's about to kill him, but then Goku stops him, asks him to spare his life. And so Vegeta escapes and Goku ends up dying. And then he gets the chance to head to Kenkai's place and train. 
And then Piccolo and Gohan had to Namek together because, I don't know, they want to see his homeworld, I guess. They don't really explain why. And then after Goku trains with King Kai for about a month, he's revived when Vegeta returns to Earth. And Vegeta asks for the Dragon Balls to wish for immortality in order to stop Frieza who's on his way to Earth. But as you'd expect, they all decline his request and Goku ends up beating Vegeta, which leads Vegeta to suggest a little partnership between them in order to defeat Frieza and his army who are on their way to Earth. This is a cool what if we get to see what would have happened if the Frieza Force actually came to Earth instead of going to Namek for the Dragon Balls. And you get to fight Zarbon and Dodoria with Goku, you get to fight the Ginyu Force, you get to fight Ginyu in Vegeta's body, which is cool. Ginyu ends up as a frog anyways. But in this case, you've got all of the Z Fighters here to actually help out, and I like how they all get to shine a little bit, even though you don't really get to fight as that much, or at all, I don't remember. And in the end, Goku manages to defeat Frieza with his Spirit Bomb after Gohan and Piccolo are teleported to Earth by the Namekian Dragon Balls to help him out a little bit. And then after he's defeated, Vegeta leaves saying he'll come back one day and finish him off or whatever. And it's a nice little happy ending with all the Z Fighters alive, nobody dies. And I also put this higher on the list because there is more bang for your buck here. There are 12 fights. This is the longest what if. So if you choose to go down this path, you actually get to enjoy the gameplay a lot more. At number four, we have Vegeta's other what if called Parental Bond. This is where Vegeta spars with Trunks in the hyperbolic time chamber and you draw out Super Trunks and you fight against your son and kind of bond with him in there. And you guys push each other to newer heights or whatever. And then when Vegeta fights Cell in his perfect form, which actually impresses Cell, which causes Cell to decide to let him live and host a tournament in 10 days time. And then when we get to the Cell games, Vegeta steps up first instead of Goku. And you get to fight Cell with him, but just as Cell's about to kill Vegeta, Trunks gets in the way and stops his blast, takes the full run of the attack and almost dies. And as you'd expect, Vegeta's enraged and blows up Cell. But of course he returns and regenerates as Super Perfect Cell. And then you end up matching his solar Kamehameha with your final flash. And Trunks steps in the fray and you get a father-son final flash. Honestly, the only reason it's so high on the list is because of this exact scene. The father-son final flash is dope. The rest of the what if is kind of eh. But the bonding between Trunks and Vegeta culminating in his father-son final flash just really does it for me. And Vegeta actually gets to be a hero in this arc. Just let me have this. At number three is Goku's final what if called Pushing the Limit. In this what if you've got to accept Piccolo's help against Raditz, but beat Raditz quickly. Just like the previous what if, Goku again faces the Saiyans with the Z Fighters, but he's a little bit late because he has to get the Senzo Beans from Korin's Tower. And in this what if, Goku asks his friends to let him face Vegeta one on one instead of accepting their help like the previous what if. And he gets his ass beat, but then Chaozu gives him a Senzu Bean. And as Great Ape Vegeta kind of crushes his friends left, right, and center, we get this dope sparking episode, probably the best sparking episode in the entire game where you get to see Goku go Super Saiyan against Great Ape Vegeta. Honestly, a really dope scene. Then he destroys the artificial moon, causes Vegeta to revert to his normal state, and then he kind of intimidates him and scares him away, tells him to get off the planet. And so he does. And with a few of his friends dead, Goku decides to head to Namek, but alone. And we get this lovely voice acting line. Eek. When Goku gets to Namek, he's greeted with Super Saiyan Vegeta. And Super Saiyan Vegeta in this armor is sick. I wish we got it in the actual video game. It's in Budokai 3. I don't know why they could put it in this game. But anyways, you fight him as a Super Saiyan. And then you end up letting him go. And you return to Earth. Telling him you want to fight him again someday. And this genuinely would be number one of the what ifs. If only there were more fights here. Vegeta just basically says, oh, I beat Frieza. That's it. So Frieza and his army are nowhere to be found. I feel like it could have been flushed out a little bit more. If Goku got to fight some of Frieza's army. Maybe you could have intertwined the stories a little bit more to incorporate Frieza with these two somehow. But nonetheless, it's still a sick storyline, and for that it gets number three. At number two, we have Trunks' final what if called Embarking Toward Tomorrow. So this what if starts out the same as the previous one, where you decide to stay in the past instead of returning to your future timeline. But in the Tournament of Power, instead of going with Vegeta, you decide to stay with Gohan. Which is honestly a little bit misleading because you immediately get blown away and separated from Gohan. But it leads to something even better, probably, where you team up with the androids. I just love this concept of Trunks teaming up with the androids who killed so many of his loved ones in his own timeline. And fighting alongside them is really nice, and I like the dialogue they share. Trunks actually gets to do a little bit of character growth against Jiren, kind of seeing himself in him a little bit. And we get some nice little bonding between him and Seventeen. And because I love Seventeen so much, and the fact that they beat Jiren together, I really, really enjoyed that. And Trunks almost crying when he thought Seventeen died was kind of funny. And before Trunks decides to return to his future timeline after they win the Tournament of Power, we get probably the cutest ending to a what if in the game. And at number one, we have Gohan's only what if called 
the strongest warrior. In this what if you've got to defeat Golden Frieza with Gohan, which is obviously sick. It's just a shame he's wearing this ugly ass tracksuit. Other than that, though, it's a nice little fight. It's nice to see Gohan manning up and doing what he can do. And then because he feels like he's too weak, he decides to train with Piccolo to get even stronger. And I find this line kind of funny. Gohan trains with Piccolo whilst working at his day job. I don't know. I just imagine Gohan lecturing during the day and then at night going to fight with Piccolo. I don't know. It's just funny to me. They do tease the fight against Hit here, but then just skip it, which sucks ass. They skip the entire Universe 6 for 7 arc in the entire game, which is annoying. Your battle with Hit was amazing! But apparently it was an amazing fight. Then when Shrunks shows up in the timeline, he confuses Gohan for an enemy. And this is where Gohan Black appears. Still disgraceful that we do not have that costume playable in the game. Put it in the game, guys. As a Goku Black costume or even as a Gohan costume. Either way, just put it in the game. And I think Kyle Hebert does a tremendous job here voicing Gohan Black. I think it's really well done. Maybe even better than Sean Chen was Goku Black, in my opinion. And again, we skip another fight here where Gohan should have fought Zamasu. It's just resorted to JPEGs over the screen, and I have to read it myself, which is a shame. But I do like that Goku and Vegeta are still here in the future to help you guys out. And we get a nice father-son Kamehameha between Gohan and Goku against Fuse Zamasu, whose hair is more similar to Gohan's in his original design. It looks a little funky, but it's cool. They then manage to trap Zamasu with the evil containment wave. So better ending than the original saga, because Trunks actually gets to keep his world alive. Though I can't help but wonder. If somebody drops that jar, that timeline is all fucked up again. And then finally, we got a cute ending with Gohan holding his family. It's beautiful. And I think even with a couple of fights that were missed in this arc that could have been really cool, the whole concept and everything still leads it to be number one, in my opinion. And with that being said, guys, that is every single What If arc in Dragon Ball Sparking Zero ranked from best to worst. Let me know what your rankings are looking like down below, or at least put like your top three or your favorite one. We can have a discussion. Again, this is obviously just my opinion. This is not etched in stone or etched into the Constitution. You do not have to agree, but don't be a dick about it. Make sure to like if you agreed, or even if you disagreed, damn, we're all people here. We can, we can disagree with each other and still like each other. Subscribe if you're new, of course. Leave your thoughts down below. And with that being said, I love you all. Take it easy, and peace.